Hello, algebra students. If you're mad at me and you're like, why did she throw a word problem into the multi-step equations lesson? Look guys, I promise this is a multi-step equations problem in disguise. <laughs> Let's take a look. It says a 10 foot ladder is leaning against the side of a building. All right, well, let's draw a little picture. Hard for me always to picture these kinds of things. So there's my uh, very tall, skinny building, and there is my 10 foot ladder. It's leaning. Do you like my beautiful drawing? If the base of the ladder is positioned 2.7 feet from the base of the building. Okay, so base of the ladder, bottom of the ladder, uh, 2.7 feet away from the base of the building. What height will the top of the ladder reach? So they're asking us, what height is that going to be? Well, so what are they really asking me? They're asking me for this measurement here. That is the side of a triangle, isn't it? So they've given me two sides of a triangle, and I have one missing. And we're just going to assume, you can always assume unless they tell you differently, that this building here is perfectly straight up. It's not the leaning tower of Pisa it's at a right angle to the ground. And by assuming that, that gives me a really important piece of information. We've got a right triangle. We know two sides. We want to find a third side. We can bust out the Pythagorean theorem. And again, you don't have to have it memorized. It's on your formula sheet, guys, but you do have to know when to use it. All right. So when you have a right triangle and you know two sides and you want to find the third side, bust out that lovely Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And if you did the formula sheet lesson with me, you know we wrote on our formula sheet already, so yours should already say this, that the a and the b are the legs of the right triangle, the sides around, the, around that right angle, and the c is the hypotenuse. So in our case, it's that leaning ladder. All right, let's plug in what we know. So you now you might say which one's A and which one's B of the two legs. It doesn't matter. So I think I will just call this missing side A. So A is the thing we don't know, and it's being squared. And we're going to add that with B. Well, we do know B. B is this other leg, so 2.7. And don't lose the square. And that's going to be equivalent to the hypotenuse squared. Well, we said the hypotenuse was that leaning ladder. So that was 10 feet long. And that's being squared as well. And I'm glad we're reviewing this because we talked about it way back when we were using formulas. But it's been a minute. So um, you can see now that I've plugged in, though, that it's a multi-step equation. Do you see that? There's some simplifying that I can do before I start solving. So let's do that. On the left-hand side, I can't simplify a squared, but I sure can do 2.7 squared since it's a number. So I'll do that in my calculator. 2.7 squared is 7.29. And that's going to be equivalent to whatever I get when I square 10, which hopefully you know 10 squared is 100. But if not, your calculator can do that for you. And now we have a little two-step equation to solve. There's no more simplifying I can do on the left-hand side. It's time to start working to isolate that variable. Remember, when you're solving, you work that order of operations backwards. So we're not going to gemma. We are going to ameg. So I will move anything adding or subtracting first. I'm going to take away that 7.29 by subtracting it on both sides. Let's see what our new equivalent equation will be. Adding 7.29 and subtracting 7.29 are opposites. They cancel. I've got a squared now, and that's going to be equal to, and you can do this in your calculator, but 100 minus 7.29 gives me 92. 0.71. Now, be sure not to stop there. That doesn't even make sense that a 10-foot ladder would go 92 feet up a wall, but you would be amazed at how many students just stop right there and tell me, I'm done. No, no, you're not. Um, a is not alone. It has a square hanging out. I've got to get rid of it. So what's the opposite of square? It's square root. 
I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides of an equation. And for those of you who are in my van students, we've talked about this before. Yes, in theory, I would get a positive and a negative answer out of this when you take a square root of both sides, but this is geometry. You can't have a negative height, so I'm not gonna worry about that. Square and square root cancel, so A is alone, and I will take the square root of 92.71 in my calculator. So second, and then the square root button, 92.71. I get something nasty. It's okay, breathe, 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 breathe. We're gonna round. 9.6286, this is ugly. I bet there's gonna be rounding directions somewhere or else your answers would already be rounded. Let's see, what height will the top of the ladder reach? Ah, to the nearest 10th of a foot. We want one decimal place, boom, boom, boom. Consider the next number, the one you're about to throw away. It's a two, it's not big enough to matter. And so I will say, hey, that's about 9.6 feet up. Beautiful. Nice job, proud of you. I love it that these big overarching concepts like solving multi-step equations or um, evaluating expressions, simplifying and solving really you know, that's all that algebra is. And we see it in tons of different um, contexts. And we've gotten to the point now where we're putting those skills together in complicated ways, but it's just the same three skills, guys. <laughs> Substituting, you saw that here. Simplifying, you saw that here. And solving. Welcome to algebra. All right, you guys, super proud of you. Happy learning.